Hello, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello and welcome back to Business Today viewers. Today's show we have something slightly different. Today we want to talk about an entrepreneur who's very successful and uh, we actually want to find out how he started and where he is now. He's actually launching some new products and new uh, range of stuff and is going into different ventures. And all we want to cover is his success, how he started and where he is now. And without further, any further ado, I would like to introduce my guest to you, Mr. Jad Chaudhry. Thank you. Thanks Welcome for inviting to me show. to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Mr. Chaudhry, would you mind just giving us a little brief about yourself? Sure. And then we're going to go into the nitty gritty of how you started and where you began and about all these lovely awards you've been winning recently oh, as well. Absolutely. So uh, I'm the uh, CEO of the Innovate Group and Naga King. I'm a 32 years old from Leeds. Uh, I'm a Yorkshire lad, 100% a Yorkshire lad. Okay. So uh, I've been in business since the age of 14. 13? 13 oh, and 14, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Chaudhry, you, when you started at the age of 13, can you tell us a bit more how, what, what really got sure. you well, into the business world? One of the things was I wanted to stand out. And uh, I was young, I was in high school, and I saw an opportunity, and it was a time where CD, the format of CDs have just come out. Okay. The transition from cassettes to CDs. Mm. And I started selling uh, CDs, music CDs, to students. Okay. Um, and it was the journey from there when I realized, do you know what, there's the demand and supply. And that's when I recognized my journey is going to start from today mm. as a businessman, because I recognize demand. Okay, that is very important, isn't it? Absolutely, well. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, then onwards, I mean, what did you do to get on to the next step, Nicola? Did you get any family support? What? Well, one of the things was education and knowledge is big for me. And it's, it's a big for everyone, and I recommend every youngsters out there get as much knowledge as you can. Um, I completed my GCSEs, went to do my A-levels, went to university, did multimedia technology. Um, I was more into whole creativity, mm -hmm. um, and I'm wanting to absorb as much knowledge as I can. Okay. After university, um, I got a job in the, one of the uh, biggest banks out there, Lloyds Banking Group. Okay. Um, starting from one of the lowest positions and worked my way up to a very senior position in Lloyds Banking Group. And at that moment, I realized, do you know what? I, I want to be an entrepreneur. Is there but a reason why um, you finished education and went into a job? Is there a reason behind that? Well, I, I want to have the people skills, and that's one of the things I liked. Being a student, you know, you learn all the knowledge, but you don't get the people skills. You don't yeah. see real life scenarios. And Very I thought true, yeah. one of the key aspects is let me go into the financial side first. Mm. And I tried to go to different sectors. So I've been in different sectors. My CV has got absolutely every single sector there is in the, in the job market. And one of the things I realized was I don't want to be stuck into one particular job. Okay. I don't want to be stuck into one particular job in one particular sector. I want to have knowledge of every single sector there is and every single position there could be. Mm. I always had, from the back of my mind, I always had back, you know, this idea where I want to be a businessman, I want to be successful. But for me, for me to reach that platform and that level, I need to have knowledge of different sectors, different roles, because mm. I'm not ready there. And it, that's when my journey started and I started getting into different sectors and I worked in very high positions in the legal sector, mm -hmm. in the um, logistics center, um, the, uh, obviously the finance, and also just recently um, the digital marketing. Uh, my okay. last position was working for Google. Okay. So, um, but along the journey, I made a lot of sacrifices. So uh, Those that's- Those are the sacrifices we want to know about because we can learn a lot from it and I'm sure my viewers can uh, learn a lot from the sacrifices you've made. Well, so absolutely. Please, um, tell us a bit about the well, difficulties and sacrifices. Well, business, as you know, when you enter business, it's all about risk. Mm. You have to take risk to open a business. Um, just recently, um, well, a couple of years back, I went through uh, a personal issue um, which caused me to go into major depression. Um, and I lost a lot of stuff, a lot mm. of businesses. I had a few businesses very successful mm. as well. Mm. Um, and I lost a lot of stuff, you know, friends, 
even family members, uh, people yeah. who are close by. Um, and it was that point where I was going through a lot of difficulties and it was personal challenges I was facing. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a dream which was the ultimate Naga King dream. And okay. I had that for four years. Because of the personal challenges I was facing, I had to hold back and think of the bigger picture. Okay. But for me to even reach the level of Naga King, which is my latest project, um, I had to make sure that I had enough experience in every single sector for me to implement it into this project. Okay. Now, while I was going through difficulties, through personal challenges, um, I was offered a role in Google. Oh, so while you were doing this, yeah, you were okay. I was offered a role in Google. Um, and within a short space of time, I gained the knowledge of digital marketing. And as you know, in business, sales and marketing go hand in hand. hand, in hand. You know, they work, that, and that's one of the sectors I kind of lacked in experience, which mm. was marketing. Mm. So I absorbed all the information, got all the experience, and a lot of people are like, you know what, you got a dream job in Google. Yeah. But for me, that, that wasn't the end of my journey. For me, the ultimate goal was Naga King. And I absorbed all the information and I resigned from my position in Google. A lot of people call me mad. They're like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. People <laughs> dream to get this position and you've just sacrificed a, a good job. Yeah. For what? And I was like, wait, wow. till you s wait till you see what's coming next. And that's when I thought, Naga King, it's, it's time for Naga King to launch. What was this dream? I mean, Naga and... Uh, well, but four, year, four or five years ago, I was doing a lot of research. And as you know, with business, it's all about research. It's all about development. It's all about finding out what's trend, trending out there. Um, about five years ago, um, I, had, I was looking into what's trending at the moment and I've noticed wherever I go to eat, I'm a foodie myself, I love food and uh, I noticed wherever I go to an establishment, they have a particular signature dish and it's always chilli. Mm. The signature dish is always with chilli, so I thought okay, it's all about chilli and then obviously there's a premium attached to that dish. Uh, you know, you go to m even the mainstream like KFC or wherever, they have their product, their main signature product, it's got something like with chili sauce. Yeah. And I looked into the, the research and this is what I was doing for the last four years. I've been building my research. I wanted to make sure if I'm going into this business, I'm not rushing into anything. I'm making sure that I've implemented all the strategies, all the marketing, all the processes, all the systems in place to make sure that Naga King is going to be the king when he is launching. Um, yeah, so I mean that that was a journey, and I also found out from marketing that the the chili market mm. is worth fourteen million pounds a year, and it's growing. And that was a recent study done by the Telegraph. Okay. Um, and it's growing forty percent year after year. Really? So the demand mm. is is there, and that's when I thought, you know what, this is a serious business to go into, but it's going to be my ultimate business to go into, and probably my last ever business and the project that I want to mm. go into. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going through personal uh, issues. In, you know, my father was a role model to me. Okay. You know, he was a businessman in the restaurant okay. field, um, but due to uh, obviously medical tension, he had to retire. Okay. Um, he, he's a role model for mm. me. You know, he he was a man who always taught me it's all about sacrifice. It's all about not giving up and follow your dreams. And mm. and that's what I was doing. I never gave up. You know, people have an idea. If you have an idea, you know, don't give up start sketching and that's what i've been that's doing exactly i mean i um, can see here you know you've had don't you've done four years of research on this yeah four years know, of research and some of the stuff you said i just want to highlight those sure. few points um before we go into the break i mean viewers jad has just mentioned some really key points you know it's about sales and marketing you know they work hands in hand in business you know these are key points and he's mentioned about research and development you know and and the passion for the business you know his passion was food he loves food and that's the uh, way he looked at his business venture he wants to go through that route you know and you know we're going to come on and we'll speak a bit more but for now stay tuned we're just going to a break see you after the break
Welcome back viewers and thank you for staying tuned. We're going to come back to our guest again and um, just as we left off to the break we were talking about the difficulties he was going through. I wanted to elaborate a bit more on the difficulties. Sure. You know, can you um, tell us, you know, I mean, I understand you mentioned you, you went down a personal meltdown, yeah. financial meltdown. Absolutely. You know, so I went through personal issues, mm -hmm. uh, financial meltdown. Uh, it was a point where I was going through a, a major depression and I was locking myself in a room and I was thinking, you know, what, what do I do? And I, and I had too much time in my hands. Did you seek medical advice for your... Uh At that point I did, but medication was not really the right way. Uh, for, for me, it's trying to help myself and think mentally, you know, what's right and what's wrong. But at that moment, I was going through a bit of a trauma uh, and, like I said, a mental breakdown. Um, one thing was I had a lot of time in my hands and because um, I was locked up in my little room and I used to spend a good 20 hours just sitting there doing nothing, you know, that was a major depression. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that for about a year and a half. Um, you know, I, I cut my links with friends, families, wow. uh, even diet, everything. Um, and then I realized, um, you know, I've got a lot of time. I picked up a pad and I started sketching and I was thinking about my life, what I've done, what I've done that's been good. And then I, I put a list, what I've done is bad. And the, the good part overweighed the bad part. And I thought, you know what, I'm wasting my life. Why? But, you know, what was the reason? And at that point, I started seeking some help and I went through a CBT course, okay. uh, which is a, a course specifically for depression. Okay. Um, it was like 11 weeks course. And it was that course that really helped me and realized how important my life is, uh, the qualities that I have and to implement that and you know carry on with your life. Because at that point, I was suicidal, um, which is obviously oh. not a good thing. Um, yeah, I was suicidal, I did a couple of things. Purely because I thought, you know, my life's end is going to come to an end. It's not worth it. You know, there's all these questions that come in your head. It goes round and round and round. But through the CBT course, I recovered. And it was at that point I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to the Jad I was, which was a guy who's full of creativity, a guy who helps people, mm. a guy who comes with new ideas and implements that and puts a solution out there to help and benefit others. Um, and that's when I got my pad and I was sketching the business plan for Naga King. I went back to Naga King mm -hmm. and I started sketching the business plan. And as you know, a uh, business plan is very important. Yeah. Without you know, a new business, a new startup, if you don't have a business plan in place, mm -hmm. you know, you're going there blind. Mm -hmm. So I started building a business plan and it took me about, I'd say about four months. And that's working on it every single day. So I made like a Bible of Naga King from the beginning of the investment to the SWOT analysis to market research. Everything was done mm. in, a, in a piece of paper. Um, and it was about this thick. That's, wow. how, thi that's how thick it was. So like I said, it's like a Bible of Naga King. Mm. Uh, I've planned the whole business out, all the uh, systems, all the implementation, all the roles that people play everything's been planned out and then I started messing with the ingredients and one of the uh, the stretches that I had in place was this is a people's product okay so I want the ingredients and the flavor to come from the public's feedback um, and I started testing flavors out started giving samples out started doing you know primary uh, market strategies which is going out there doing mm. surveys Going back to basics really, and one of the things was I started remembering, because I did business in A level, and okay. I started remembering all the theories that people implement when they do business. So y any youngsters out there who are watching, you know, do business A level, it's, uh, it's very beneficial, you know, later in life. Definitely. And I started learning all the marketing, I started implementing all the stuff, got feedback, refined my product, gave it out again, refined, and I started refining and refining my product till it came to a point where people like, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. And Naga King, like I said, it's, it's a people's product. You know, it's from feedback from people. And I thought about the consumer. And I looked at other products out there, uh, other competitors that are out there. And I noticed they're missing a certain element, and that is connection with people. Mm. Uh, I'm very big on social marketing. You know, Naga King is very big at social marketing. Uh, as a marketer myself, coming from Google, I, you know, marketing is probably, you know, 80% 
of a business. Of that's a business, how, that, that's how it is. Yeah. You know, if you're going to put an investment in a business, marketing is the main thing. Um, start doing all the marketing, uh, different methods really, mm. um, from newspaper, TV ad, social marketing, using all the free marketing tools available out there and paid as well. So using Google AdWords, there's a lot of stuff that I've been implementing uh, from a marketing point of view and it's worked. Um, we start interacting with crowds. I've got the top chefs from the Indian restaurant world industry, mm -hmm. um, got their support. They're gonna be using this product on their dishes. Uh, also food bloggers as well. So on Instagram, I've got the top food bloggers. So you've, you've looked at all the angles that you Every can single angle that I could approach, every single channel mm. has been approached and utilized with Naga King. Um, and th that, that's pretty much the journey when it comes to the marketing. You know, we thought we'd go through different angles from like a cheesy ad to something serious. We've done every single uh, marketing strategy there is. Because um, I want people to know this is a very quality, this mm. is a quality product. Yeah. Um, you know, it's from the ingredients, everything's triple A grade. Um, the manufacturing's triple A grade. You know, this is as good as it gets. Yeah. And it's, it's natural as well. So it's mm. vegan friendly, it's halal, it's kosher, you name it. Yeah, it's I can see it's got no, <laughs> it's got no chemicals in this product. Mm. Um, it's as natural as it can be. And then I thought about the other side. I was looking at my competitors. And this is one of the things that a lot of people should look at is always look at your competitors and take it as an inspiration because at the end of the day, they, they've started the, the first step. And you know, look at how they kind of do their role model, their business model, and see if you can tweak it or maybe do it be better. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things was I looked at the business model of my competitors and I noticed they're just targeting the consumers. Now, one of the biggest chunks, especially when it comes to the Naga Pickle, is the commercial trade. And commercial trade is taking a consumer product and implementing it onto restaurants, steakhouses, takeaways, etc. Yeah. But there isn't actually a commercial product in place. And that's where Naga King comes in, and that's when it implemented the commercial side. So we, I've got the consumer side, which mm. is the jars, and then I've got the commercial side, which is a four-liter bottle with the pumps. I'm looking at ways, as you know, with Indian restaurants, they've been suffering quite bad recently, um, you know, with staff, staffing issues, mm. visa issues, um, and thousands and thousands of restaurants are closing every single week. Why? Because they can't get the right chefs in place. So not, that's where Naga King comes in place. It's a solution to help restaurants as well. Mm -hmm. It's, if you, even if you've got someone who's new, uh, chef, the taste will be consistent. They've got a commercial product in place. It's got flavor. My product has flavor. Okay. So they'll be cooking dishes using uh, my is product. Is one product here? Or There's three products. So okay. we've got one which is original mm -hmm. and it's got spices. There's, it's not just pure chili. It's got spices in there. Um, then I've got one with shatkara, which is a wild lemon from Bangladesh. And then I've got one with carrots. And each different product has different uses. So the carrot is for the westernized dishes, for example, and some curries as well. So your shepherd's pie, your pasta, that's perfect, the carrot one. The shatkara is perfect for your meat, lamb, curry, curry industry. That's perfect. Okay, okay. And the original is it's an all-rounder. So you can make your hot wings, you can make your steaks, you can even make scrambled eggs with a dollop of original yeah. naga mm -hmm. and you spice it up. Mm. And that's where the three products come in. Mm. Uh, but from a commercial point of view, all three products are available. It's convenient, it's fast, it's easy, and consistent taste. Yeah. Uh, what I like about your thought here is that you've actually looked at all the markets and you're creating a product for each market here. Absolutely. You know, some people just start off with one yeah. product which yeah. is just tailored at one market. Absolutely. That's great. And I love the idea of, you know, how you've done your research and how you approach like vloggers and, you know, the different avenues of getting your product out there. Yeah. You know, that is really important. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of uh, business people do when they mm -hmm. start off and one of the main cause of failure is because of research. Yeah. You know, they're not researching their market that they're going into. Absolutely. They're not researching into their competitors. Yeah. You've just mentioned here, you know, if you need to look at your competitors and yeah. you need to find how you can better yeah, absolutely. the product that com you're coming in competition yeah. with. And that's a very important fact. And I'd urge my viewers, you know, note these down. Those are really important things. Yeah. Um, 
You've also mentioned the importance of marketing covers 80% yeah. of a business. Absolutely. You know, and that again, you know, uh, a lot of people miss this a lot of the time. They do not concentrate on the marketing side of their business. The marketing is, uh, to me, is the religion of the business. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's like I said, if, if you're opening a business, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you start up, you need to look at your budget for your startup budget mm -hmm. and then double that because that's going to be your marketing. You need to put a massive chunk into marketing because you need to create the demand. And how will you create the demand? Well, the demand is by marketing. You know, you need to get the word out there. And it, it's crucial, you know, yes, yeah. it, it does cost money, but from a return on investment point of view, in the long run, it's very beneficial. Yeah. Now, um, obviously, we get coming to another break uh, very soon. Okay. Uh, for the next minute, I just want to say, I'm really pleased to have met you today. It's as a my pleasure. Guest, and um, there's a lot to learn here. You had several businesses, I yes. understand, I've Googled, and I'm going to talk about this after the break. Yeah. Right. Um, you've also had uh, a product, a chips product. Yes. I've Googled and I found out about yes. you. Yes. You know, we want to uh, come back to uh, that and have a bit of a chat on okay. that one. Viewers, stay tuned, please, and um, we'll see you after the break. Welcome back viewers and um, thank you very much for tuning back in. Now, before we finished, we talked about your personal meltdown yeah. and you mentioned your f financial meltdown. Yeah. Right, I just want to touch back up on that. Um, obviously, you've had a dream. Yeah. Uh, you've been through all those difficulties and yeah. you, you had a dream, yeah. an actual dream Absolutely, uh, yeah. about the venture that you're going into again. Yeah. Um, but financially, you, you were also in difficulties. Yeah. How did you overcome that situation? Well, that's where Innovate Group was born. So for me to go into my ultimate goal, which was Naga King, and I knew Naga King is going to be a very expensive business to be in. I had to go from start off with a couple of businesses, um, and that's where Innovate Group was born. I've got a couple of businesses under there. So I've got um, uh, a hotel comparison website, which is called findthebestrooms.com. Um, and I always looked into Warren Buffett's theory, and that, that's one of the things I would, um, you know, encourage youngsters out there is look into theories. And Warren Buffett theory was the one who made me realize, you know what, start having little companies, start having all these little companies for your ultimate goal, because mm -hmm. you know, and use the funds and the profits from the little companies to fund your ultimate dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, Warren Buffett's theory is, have a minimum of three businesses, no matter how small the income is, <laughs> have three s small businesses um, and you will be financially secure. I followed his methodology and that's where Innovate Group was born. Mm -hmm. So I've got findthebestrooms.com, which is a hotel comparison mm -hmm. website. I've got Innovate DJs, which is um, a DJ and an audio specialist uh, company. Uh, mm -hmm. for weddings, clubs, etc. I've got PP Cars, which is the sales of supercar. So okay. it's a rare supercar sales, like your Lamborghinis, your Ferraris, wow. your Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. um, I've got UK One Investments, which is a London property uh, investment company. And, uh, you know, recently Naga King, yeah. uh, you know, th that's my recent, uh, obviously, yeah. industry. That's a very important uh, point there. There's a, there's a couple of things I want to cover there. I mean, you mentioned about Warren Buffett, you know, yeah. and yes, one of his theories, and you know, I have many different income streams rather than one main income Absolutely, stream. Absolutely, yeah. Because if that one goes wrong, yeah. you, everything's gone wrong. If you have many different ones, if one goes wrong, you've got another one to cover you. Absolutely. And that's the idea behind Warren Buffett's theory. And yeah. I, I, I love the idea. I well, one of the things I do is I, I help, and I'm a business mentor for a lot of the youngsters out there. Ah, right. And yeah. um, I tell them all about the Warren Buffett's theory. You know, I say, you know what, don't focus. Yeah, you've got goals. You want to be a doctor. You want to be a scientist. You want to be an engineer but don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Because what happens if you're made redundant the following day? You know, th then you're gonna be going through stress, financial difficulties, etc. 
um, and I tell them all about Warren Buffett's theory and I mentor a lot of youngsters out there. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah. Create businesses out there, give them ideas, help them with marketing. I don't want anything in return. I don't want anything in return from these guys. All I want them to be successful and I want them to shine and that's the satisfaction I get because as an entrepreneur, I have to influence the next generation out there for them mm. to be successful. And as a young guy myself, you know, I have that connection as well with the youngsters. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mm. like to be someone who could mentor them and watch them grow. Giving something back to the... Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's all about giving back. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of guys out there who are successful and that's all down to my mentoring. You know, they're in the media business, they're in the banking, the legal. And all that has come from my past experience where I've been in different sectors. And that, that's the other advice I give. Try and be in different sectors, get as much experience as you can, because later on in life, you might need them. <laughs> that's true, very yeah. true. Uh, actually, um, I admire that actually. And we need more entrepreneurs to get involved with the youngsters. And I think that is a very important thing because they are our future. Absolutely. So yeah. I think you've chose a very good um, way of giving back here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I mean, we, met, uh, we mentioned about the financial meltdown. What you're saying is what you've done is you've took several smaller businesses under yeah. the banner of Innovate. Uh, Innovate Group. Uh, I also yeah. had uh, a fish and chip shop as well. Yeah, uh, I've researched on that one. I mentioned just before the break, you yeah. know, that it was a unique idea. Can you please tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, um, as a Yorkshire guy, you know, we're big on every single Friday we have fish and chips. Okay. And um, I noticed a gap in the market. And that gap was people who are celiac sufferers people who can't have gluten and yeah you know they, they love fish and chips but they can't have fish and chips because it contains gluten mm. and that's when Yorkshire Chippy was born it was history's first ever full-time focused fish and chip shop gluten-free wow. um, unique idea it was unique it was very successful um, and like I said it, it was supported by the late uh, MP Joe Cox as well mm. who was very supportive and um, yeah, it was the last place she visited mm. as well before she passed away. So it was a very successful business. It was located in Heckman White, which is in Yorkshire near Leeds. Okay. And uh, it was doing really well. Um, but obviously I had to pass it down. Due to the difficulties I had, personal issues, mm -hmm, I had to let that go. But that wasn't the end of the story because that success opened doors up for my other businesses mm -hmm. uh, in the Innovate Group. No, that's... Um very creative thinking, actually. I've never actually thought about gluten-free chips, you know. <laughs> it's, it's more healthy as well. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, okay. Um, what we're learning from you here is the most important uh, lesson here that I've learned from you is, you know, you may fall in life yeah. in various situations. Absolutely. In the business world or in life itself. Yeah. Uh, but the most important thing is to get up yeah. and go. And like, like you mentioned, as an entrepreneur, it's all about learning from failures. Um, and, you, you know, you're going to fail a couple of times, but it's all about getting up and jump twice higher <laughs> to your next project. And that's the spirit of an entrepreneur. Yeah, Never yeah, give up. Word, be a soldier. Is, yeah, that's it. Another word is what uh, Mr. Charles was saying here is, you know, there's times where you're going to have difficulties. You're going to have a lot of negative things in your life. But what do you do with those negatives? You need to learn how to create positiveness out of them. Absolutely. That's, that's the and no bottom one's, line you're No saying. one's going to help you. It's going to be yourself. So mm. it's only yourself who's going to get yourself back on your feet and start you know, progressing to your next step in life. Mm. Okay. I mean, we've, we've covered a bit about yourself, um, but there's a lot more about yourself that we want to cover. Sure. Now, we've, uh, you've recently, when I've Googled and found out a bit more about you and I did a bit of research on yourself, mm -hmm. um, you've won quite a few awards yeah. recently. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, trophies here on the table. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So <laughs> tell us a bit this more year's been absolutely great, alhamdulillah. Um, I've won, I've been a finalist for two categories um, for UK BCCI, and that was for Entrepreneur of the Year and Best Product of the Year. Hmm. Um, I think I'm the only one who's been in the uh, category twice uh, compared to any other finalist. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I won the award uh, for the best product of the year. And that is due to the, the marketing that I've done for Naga King. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, that's for Naga King, the best product of the year. Um, a lot of people have the samples. I did a UK tour where I was giving out thousands and thousands of samples for free. Mm. People enjoy the taste and they started nominating me for an award because they were like, you know what, this, this, this is going to be a product of the year. Okay, I'm sure um, this. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, you know, I got the support from a lot of people as well. You know, Shamim Chowdhury from uh, Birmingham, Suhana from London, Farouk Mir from London. These guys have really supported me to get me recognized out there and get my face shown as well. Because one of the things was I was always hidden away from the Bengali community. Okay. So as a businessman, I was always hidden. And it was this year that I decided, you know what, it's time to show my face. It's time to expose myself that's and, yeah. you know, bring myself to the Bengali community. And that's when I was nominated for UK BCCI. And I won a couple of awards. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just that, I've made it into a publication in the British Bangladeshi Who's Who book. Oh, okay. So I've made it into that. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, inshallah, there's more to come as well, which I can't reveal the details. Yeah. But 2017 has been an absolutely amazing year for our recognition. Um, a lot of people are recognizing my journey, the, the difficulties that I've been through and to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the next step for Naga King is to take it worldwide. Okay. I've already got things in pipeline to go and launch it in Bangladesh and create job opportunities there for the poor, because that, that's my memento, okay. to help the poor mm -hmm. and create job opportunities. Do you have any major plans for 2018 that we should look out for? 2018. It's going to be a big marketing to get this product out there in shelves because at the moment, being a new product, not many supermarkets are taking my product purely because it's natural. You know, it's a new product. Is it going to sell or not? But where I'm very confident it will sell. So the aim is for 2018, mm. get this in every single mm. supermarket there is in the UK because this is launching ne this Saturday um, nationwide and online through our website as well. And the aim is to get it everywhere. Every single corner, every single restaurant should use this as well. Um, and the aim is to um, also create a Naga King challenge. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So that's going to be launched next Can year. Tell us a bit more about the... Yeah, the it's, it's all about uh, for restaurants uh, to have their own event in the restaurant using Naga King, create a dish, get their customers in, create a good event, and the winner has a trophy award recognition. Okay. Uh, so it's an all-rounder fun day. It's it's a recognition, and it's is that is, is, is this challenge could be any time of the year, or is that going to be a particular day? It, you, what plans do you have for this? The the plan is it's going to be throughout the whole year. Okay. So the amount of restaurants there is in the UK for Naga King to do a challenge in all these restaurants, it's probably going to take a year to visit all the restaurants. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all throughout the whole year, and it's it's a good income for the restaurants as well. Yeah, definitely. From a selling point of view. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, and um, any other business ventures that you're looking to get into, or is that it? Naga King is my ultimate and last project. Um, my next step is to grow the business because Naga King is not short term. Mm -hmm. I want this to go on even after I die. You know the company to grow and you know who knows it might be in the FTSE 100 you know who knows it might be there I want to take this global like I said launch it in Dhaka launch it in Canada and launch it in Dubai mm -hmm. so yeah. these three areas are the next steps launch it worldwide and uh, see what, where it yeah. takes me really yeah, and I'm try and help the poor that, that's that's my memento try and build schools hospitals you know it's not all about making money and making profits I, I'm a guy who's always given back that's um, right. That's and it's all about giving back. Yeah. I think that's one of the traits of successful entrepreneurs. Absolutely, you know. yeah. Successful entrepreneurs, they always know from the offset that, you know, when I do become something, when I do something yeah. successful, I want to be able to give back something. Absolutely. It's valuable. one of the qu uh, qualities I learned from my father. You know, my father is a, is a man who always gave back to his community. At the moment, he's got stuff going on uh, in his village in Jagannathpur, mm. where if a person dies, he covers all the costs for the funeral, okay. the prayers and everything, all, and the cost is covered. So th that's something that I want to take to the next level as well, okay, worldwide. Um, mm. Yeah, it's all about giving back. Thank you very much, Mr. Jack it's a Chelsea. pleasure, thank you. And it's been a pleasure to have you here. And thank I you very much. Thank I want to really thank our program coordinator, Farsu Ahmed Chaudhry, to bring you here onto the show as my guest no, today. Thank you very and, um, much. I'm very pleased to meet you. And obviously, there will be many more meetings, and uh, we'll call you back 
again uh, maybe in 2018 sometime to find out a bit more about thank where you. your brand has gone to thank and, you very um, much just to wrap up the program um i want to say that there's a few things i've learned viewers um and i think you know it's very important that we follow and we rub shoulders with the right people mr child has mentioned that he follows a lot of theory of warren buffet there's a reason for that you know you always follow successful people and one of the reasons why we brought mr child here onto the show is he's a successful entrepreneur young successful entrepreneur which i am very proud of to have in our community and uh, to bring him here and I learn a few things from him and we need to look out for other successful entrepreneurs and learn off them and that's one of the most valuable thing that you've mentioned here Absolutely. as well yeah. with the other stuff you've mentioned and just to put everything in a very short um, few sentences Mr. Chowdhury's mentioned sales and marketing hands in hand please remember that in every business you're in it, it could be a charity organization you're in marketing is the most important thing of a business and is also mentioned about the passion you know to have passion in what you're doing his love for food has brought him to the dream of naga king which is now you know launching very big um, this saturday 23rd december okay 23rd of december you're yeah. launching the product officially officially okay okay that's brilliant now you know there's so much things that we've learned here you get up and you go i mean he's been through financial difficulties personal difficulties what has he done he didn't just give up he looked back he's seen what the mistakes he's, he's made and the things that he's done right and obviously he's, he's seen that there's many things he's done right in life and he wanted to take that to another level and that gave the birth of naga king so that's it for me today and um, viewers, if you do know of anybody um, who's a successful entrepreneur like Mr. Chowdhury, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Our email is businesstoday at europentv.com and um, if you want to watch this show or any other show, past shows, please go on to YouTube um, and check, uh, you will be finding us. So that's it from today. Uh, for today, tomorrow's business is business today.